There we go. All right. All right. Okay. We're recording. Let's go. All right. Hello, Taft. How are you doing today, Mike? I am doing quite well. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. good Saturday ha- evening. Yeah. How's your How's your second week of school going? Uh, pretty good so far. I had my first homework assignment this week. Besides that, it's been pretty good. Nice. Um, I got my braces off this week, so I'm very happy. It and you look so weird without a mic. After how many years has it been? Uh, I think two or three actually. After two or three years of seeing you with braces, seeing you without braces is weird. That's like seeing me without glasses. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice having them off. Um, funny thing. So all the viewers today. Um, we're recording late today because I, um, clumsy me, dropped the microphone and broke it, or the one that Taff uses. So we had to run to Guitar Center and uh, buy a new microphone. Yep, he dropped it as he was putting it in my tissue box, which I still have as my stand. Yeah, tissue box. All right, so uh, before we get to video game news today, Taff, I want to share with you some new Force Awaken toys. Uh, you know me, I'm always for Star Wars. I'm the biggest, star- okay, not the biggest, but I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. Yeah, we're talking like a bunch of Legos and like everything that looks fun. All oh, right. they had soccer ball droid toy? Yeah, oh, here, let me, let me get to that. Let me get to that. So, uh, the first thing I saw was a Stormtrooper Nerf gun. It, yeah, you were telling me about that. What exactly does, does that look like? Uh, it looks like the, uh, the blaster that the clone trooper uses. Is it? Like this, like black and all that, or is it no? Black? It's it's like white. Uh, I'm looking at the picture of it right now. It's like bright orange and white. It, it, the coloring isn't isn't right, but the um the shape is. I guess you could say they nerfed the coloring. Oh, 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 oh. my plan is to spray paint it. Please, please don't log off after. Don't, please don't exit out after that pun, please. <laughs> um, it holds like twelve darts and will shoot sixty five feet. That's that's pretty intense for a Nerf gun. That's going to be pretty darn awesome. Uh, they also showed off some drones, like a remote control flying X-Wing and Millennium Falcon. No. I'm serious. You're lying. I don't believe you. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Uh, I think you control them. It looks like you control them with a controller. How, how much are they? Um, I have no idea, but oh. they look they look pretty sweet. Well, get on your game on that, Mike. Come on, seriously, bud. All right. and Okay. And the one toy that's taking over the internet... The remote control BB 8s. You know that little soccer ball, uh, droid? Yes. They have a toy for it. And it works just like the one in the, in the trailer. It's just like rolls on a single ball. It looks awesome and you control it with your smartphone by the looks of it. No. It looks so awesome. Oh my gosh. Uh, oh gee, I'm gonna go broke. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna buy a Millennium Falcon hover thingy. Then I'm gonna buy the soccer ball droid and I'm gonna race them and they're gonna break and then I'm gonna have to buy more and. <laughs> And I'm going to buy the Nerf gun because I'm going to be trying to shoot the Millennium Falcon with the (laughs) Nerf gun. And it's just going to be, I'm going to go so broke. Yeah. And they they have, there's like Legos and action figures. And you know the Legos are going to be super popular. Oh, of course. Especially for you, Mike. Uh, Yeah, I got some some new Legos. And they have a cockpit for the Millennium Falcon as a bed. I would sleep in that. Is that a bed or a crib? It's, It's a bed. It's like a really small bed. But I would I would sleep in this. Okay, I just decided that if I ever have kids, I'm getting them a Millennium Falcon cockpit crib. You know it. I would I would definitely do that. They look they look, it's just and there's a bunch of Legos because obviously Legos are really popular. Wait, go back up. That is that a black X-wing? Um, it's called Lego uh Poe Demarion X-wing fighter. So I'm ex- I'm I'm assuming he's some sort of hero. Who yeah, had- that that looks awesome. It does look. We it's like need to black like and link gold. like maybe that picture to the YouTube side, or we can post that on our website or something because that looks really cool. It does look pretty sweet. The coloring is gonna be awesome. I want to know the story behind the guy who flies this thing, dude. I'm so pumped just to find out about Kylo Ren. I'm just I'm excited for the whole movie. I know, but we, I'm just so <laughs> <laughs> so pumped for Kylo Ren because I'm so I'm I'm a dark side sympathizer. Yeah, and so uh, I just want the dark side to come back, and I want Kylo Ren to just come back with a vengeance and just. Who is he? To- he's the bad guy. He's the one with the, the broadsword lightsaber, it looks like. I see. And and have we seen him before in the movies? Nope. He's totally new. He's like 100% new. What's his? Have you seen his origin story somewhere in a game, maybe? No, I don't think that we know anything about him, Oh, which okay. is what I'm so pumped about. 
Oh, that's exciting. And if we do know anything about him, the reason I don't know anything about him is because I'm going into this movie blind purposely because I want to be like in awe. I want to go back to like the first time I saw Star Wars, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing the same thing. I'm not, I'm not like reading up on anything or I just, I just want to go in and like experience it fully. Exactly. All right. All right, Taff. You want to get into some news today? Let's do it. Let's do it. Breaking news. All right, Taft. Uh, hey, have you have you played Metal Gear Solid yet? I haven't, but I do plan on trying to play it at at least play it, if not buy it, this week. All right. Well, speaking of buying and probably downloading and such, um, the phys- if you bought the physical disc for for PC, the only thing on there is a eight megabyte file to download it through Steam. Seriously. So if- yeah, so if you were to buy the physical disc, you're just going to download it digitally anyway. What's the point of that? I I don't know. It's it's kind of sad because I have slow internet, right? So I if I buy a big if I want to get a big game, I usually get buy the physical disc because my internet sucks. Yeah, so, like, but like, I, why why would you buy the physical disc if you're already just going to get it through the internet or whatever? I don't know. Some well, I mean, some people like to have that physical. Thing. Just yeah, collectors and stuff. Okay, yeah, like I, I can see like you want to put it on your shelf or something. Okay, exactly. That makes more sense. Okay, but the game is a twenty-eight gigabyte download. So that's a that's a big download. Yeah, that is that's pretty big. Yeah, that's that that's gonna take me over like two days to download. <laughs> that that would take me that would take me. My internet's decent. Probably about probably about twelve hours or so. Yeah, you have nice internet compared to mine. I get like 200 kilobytes per second. Yeah, your internet is terrible, Mike. It's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah. Well, what do you got going on, Taft? Um, for me, on the top, might as well talk about my news I have for Metal Gear. I'm sure everybody knows right now that uh, Metal Gear is an open world, which is pretty awesome. It's open world. What? Yeah, I want to say this is the first. I'm not a huge Metal Gear fan. This is the first one. If I play it, this will be the first one I've ever played. So if I if I'm wrong on this, please let me know in the comments, or maybe I'll revise it later or something. But uh, as far as I know, it's the only open world Metal Gear. That's exciting. Yeah, and it's it looks like it's pretty interesting. It's like it's not one of those ones where you go around and like you just constant have ammo and you can pick it up or whatever either. From what I've heard, considering I haven't played it yet, uh, you actually have to go back to Mother Base and refill your ammo and get stuff there. Where does it take place? Do you know anything? Yes, I was getting to that next. Uh, it takes place uh, in Afghanistan and Africa, like it, northern Africa. Is there a certain year? Like, is it current time? No, future? it's it's, uh, it's in the past. It's back when uh, there's like the Soviet push, I think. I see. Yeah, I'm I'm also I'm saving this a lot of the story for when I play it and stuff. I don't want anything to be spoiled for me because since it's gonna be my first Metal Gear experience, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. But uh, I've watched a little bit of like the like atmosphere of it and some of the tiny bit of gameplay, not much. Like just wandering around, gameplay and no story mode missions, and uh, the weather changes and it looks great and the like the effects that affects the way you play the game. Like when there's thunderstorms and stuff, um, uh, like the you can cover up a shot by like firing when the thunder hits. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. At least, that, at least that's what it looked like when one, I, was, I was watching some guy snipe some guy, and he was in the thunderstorm. And I don't know if it was just coincidence. There was no audio to it, like the guy talking or anything. It was just somebody playing. Yeah. It seemed like he was waiting for the thunder to hit. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's a cool mechanic. Uh, yeah. And then, um, uh, you know, have you heard of Quiet? The controversy behind her. Uh, wait, is she a character in the game? Yes. yes no, she's I a don't. Sniper character in the game. I don't. Okay, well, uh, Quiet has recently been like the target of femi- of like radical feminist because uh, she's basically naked. She's in a bikini top, and she's she is very scantily clothed. Is that like her everyday? Yes, and they explain it. Like, okay. there's a reason behind it. It's not just so they attract male viewers and people cosplay her. Okay, at least according to the story. Um, the story is that apparently she was burned very badly. Yeah, and uh, to save her, what they ha- or to save her, or when she was burned, I'm not exactly positive. When, because you know Metal Gear stories, they're just super convoluted and stuff. Yeah. Um. She was infected with some parasites that cause her 
like they have some good side effects like she's like superhuman reflexes and stuff like that and keeps her alive okay but the downside to it is she no longer breathes through her throat she ble- breathes through her skin so if she covers up too much of her skin she suffocates okay 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 uh, i yep. don't that's weird yep that almost sounds like a reason to have a scantily cl- scantily clad woman that's why i said at least according to the story. I see. I yeah. see. And then my final thing for Metal Gear, this is just a funny fact I found out. That, All right. Uh, I think kind of goes along with like the goofiness of Metal Gear, its seriousness and goofiness. Uh, you have a horse in the game called Diamond Horse, called D-Horse. Called what? They call they call him Diamond Horse or D-Horse. Okay. Uh, you can knock him out. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can knock him out for a solid 10 seconds if you drop a supply cr- uh, a supply drop on his head. Oh my gosh, you can do that. It doesn't kill him, it just knocks him out for a solid 10 seconds. Wow, what? I, I watched somebody do it, and it was hilarious. They just dropped it on its head, and the source just drops down and passes out, and 10 seconds later, he gets right back up. That's fantastic. Yep. Well, you know what else is fantastic, Taft? Uh, me? Uh, well, other than that, the Our opening... podcast? <laughs> yeah, that too. The <laughs> opening cinematic for Halo 5 looked pretty fantastic. It was awesome. It if was, you haven't seen it, you gotta go watch it. Yeah, I don't wanna spoil too much of it, even though it's a, it's just an opening cinematic, but I don't wanna spoil it, but it looks pretty cool. So like this, this, the opening cinematic to the game? Yes, yes it is. So it, I'm, I'm, this is the only thing I'm gonna spoil about it. If you don't wanna hear any spoilers about it, just skip ahead like legit like 10 seconds. It looks like you start off as, um, the fire team Osiris? Yeah. Okay. That, that that's what it looks like from the, from the trailer. And okay, for those of you who have played Halo and stuff, they were obvious. They were obviously playing it on easy because they are just like trudging through all those enemies. I mean, it's an entire team of new Spartans and stuff. Like it's they're the top of the line Spartans at the time. They're they're the team that's hunting down Master Chief. They have to be awesome. I mean, did you see Buck from ODST? That dude's a total BA. That's true. And then so. I I don't think it, I don't think there's gonna be any problem with it. And plus, I don't know what level you're talking about, Mike. It takes me on legendary. It takes me like one shot to the face on a grunt. Still, yeah. Okay, yeah. not true. It takes me like two or three, but still. I don't know. By the time I'm done with uh, grunts on legendary, I can flip them upside down and use them as a pencil. All yeah, the lead I put in them. That's true. But uh, but okay. But I, um, speaking of the trailer, um, one of the Spartans looked just like um, what's his name? Nathan Fillion or Kanye West? Na- Nathan Fillion. Yeah, it's because he's the voice actor for it. But he, oh, but they got his likeness pretty well. Yeah. Uh, back when uh, they were designing the characters and stuff, because Nathan Fillion's a humongous Halo fan. Yeah. Uh, they were like kind of keeping him up to date with all the like modeling of the character and stuff, and he was super pumped about it. Apparently, that's pretty awesome. And I swear, one of the Spartans looked just like Kanye West. He does not. Has not, this, I don't get it, Mike. He has the same facial hair and the same like sassy look on his face. Kanye West look isn't sassy. It's the I'm better than you look. No, it's the I'm pissed all the time look. Okay. Which probably is the same look. Yeah, I, probably. Yeah, but uh yeah. That that's it. Um speaking of other fantastic things and and you know snow because there's snow in the trailer. Yeah. Star Wars Battlefront beta is coming in October. That was that was a bad you transition. and your transitions, Mike. Uh, I'm I'm trying to get better at them. You know me. Uh, yeah. So Star Wars Battlefront, it, um, they they announced they're having a technical test placed for early October. They're going to be testing maps like um the large scale 40 player Hoth map and some smaller maps like Tatooine. That's gonna be fun. Just uh for any body out there uh if this is an open beta i've which i'm pretty sure it is i want to say i read that somewhere um watch out for fake beta sites we don't want anybody like giving away their information and stuff like that yeah and but as of as of the 31st of august they haven't announced whether or not it's gonna be open or be, open or closed yeah, so I, I think it's a rumor that it's open but just you know just in case yeah that's true um also with the launch of the beta for the console game, they're also releasing um, a companion mobile app that allows people to um, has has features like like a, a card game called Base Command. It enables players to check their stats and progression, communicate with friends, and earn in-game credits. Um, used to unlock weapons and other resources. 
Really? So, yeah, yeah. Taps, how do you feel about companion apps for games? I absolutely hate them. After, yeah. after the Unity app, I hate them completely and utterly despise them. What was the Unity app like? Uh, crap. Crap. What, what, what did you do with it? Did it like, uh, you were supposed to be able to use it to un, like, as you progress in the game, you'd progress in the app as well. And you were supposed to be able to use that to unlock like different armor sets and stuff. Yeah. But, um, I for some reason could never connect it to my, uh, to my game. Like I tried everything. I, and I apparently was not the only person. In fact, a lot of people seem to have this problem. Well, I've always felt like the apps are just another gimmick for the game. They're, yeah, they are. And like for certain things, like, there are certain ones I can understand, like, uh, from what I've heard, Fallout 4 is going to get one. Yeah. And it's going to be like, it's just basically a Pip-Boy on your phone, which that... works. I'm perfectly fine with that. It's not like I have to have the, I don't have to have that to progress farther in the game. Exactly. Or get other things in the game. Like, there were top level, okay, not top level, but very high level things in Unity that you could only get through the companion app. And that was super aggravating, especially because the outfit, like the stats I was going for, I needed to get farther into the Unity companion app to get those. Well, that's annoying if they force you to use the app. Yeah, it was ridiculous. I don't want to be forced to use the that, that. That takes the fun out of it, you know? Exactly. No. Uh, you got anything, Taft? I do. All right. Um, so I have uh, one, small th- one small thing, and then I'm going to get into a slightly bigger one. Uh, for those of you out there who have played Overlord, there's another one coming out. And for any of those out there who haven't played Overlord, Overlord is this game where you play as an evil Overlord. And there's two of them, so the third one's coming out. Um, and it's hilarious. It is the funniest, like dark, like it's just dark comedy. You you have these guys called Minions. They are not short and yellow and look like <laughs> Cheetos. Yeah, no, they they're not that. They they look like goblins. Yeah, and they are hilarious, and it's great. And uh. For our team, Fortress 2 fans out there, Overlord Fellowship of Evil is the new one coming out. And if you pre-order it, you can get like the uh, you can get all the hats, like the engineer, like from all the classes, like the engineer, the spy, the medic, all those. The medic has glasses. You can get those for your minions. That's cool. Yeah, and it's pretty funny. And I would imagine that they probably have some something to do with yeah. like each per- like each minion or whatever. Like it increases their stat and doing something. Yeah, what 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 type of game is Overlord? Um, it's an RPG. It's an RPG. Yeah, is it you, like a first person or is no, it like it, an RTS? Um, it's got slight RTS elements to it, I guess you could say. But it's more of like, um, you play as the Overlord. You're su- you're super strong but slow. Your minions are the like your main form of attack. You send them to the enemy you want to attack. Okay, and you get your minions to do things for you. That's how it's kind of like an RTS. Like it's they're like the tiny army. Yeah. Uh, very, very, like I wouldn't call it an RTS in any time, in any sense, but to give you a slight idea, that's the best way I can compare it. Okay. And uh, yeah. So what's different about this one? Instead of playing as another Overlord, like single player Overlord. Yeah. This one has multiplayer. That's a first. That's interesting. Yeah, it's four person. You play on like the same team, or is it versus? Uh, either or. Either or. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 you're evil. So if you want to, you can work together with these other evil people, or you can screw them over. Uh, like you can take, like you can kill them and take the money for yourself. Oh, that or sounds the, like fun. T- take all the glory for yourself or whatever. Um, you have four of them. They're called the Nether Ghouls. Yeah. Kind of like the Nazgul's from Lord of the Rings. Okay. And they kind of look like them. And they, but they all look really cool. And uh, the four of them come about because the original Overlord is dead, I guess, or he's just not there. He's missing. Okay, so it's kind of like a like a, a power vacuum. Exactly, there's a power vacuum, so the four of them come to replace them. Okay. And uh, for those of you who out there who are interested, that comes out September 29th. Nice. And then uh, another small one I'm going to bring up real quick on, it's tech news, not so much game news. All right. Oh, uh, we're coming up with our third new controller for Xbox One. Really? <laughs> yes, but this one is half the price. It's only $80. All right, is it, is it the, uh, the Power A? That's exactly what it is. It's our third one coming out, and it's got buttons on the back too. Yeah, but they're not like triggers; they're more like old-fashioned buttons. They don't look—they don't look as cool as the paddles on the Microsoft version. No, I think the Microsoft's probably the. If you want, like, a, if you're wanting to get a controller like this, and you're not really worried about money, I would go for the Microsoft controller. It seems like it's all around better. Like sensitivity's probably better. 
Um, but like the paddles and stuff, they're removable. And then it has the better directional pad. So I feel like that's probably the better one to get. Yeah. If you don't care about money, but if you want like a a cheap one, this is the one to go for. Yeah. Because this is only like it's only like twenty bucks more than a normal controller. Because it's, I believe it's, yeah, it's eighty bucks. Yeah, and a normal controller, I want to say, is like sixty. Yeah, but hey, this one has a uh, custom lighting with over two hundred and twenty-five color combinations, which is pretty cool. It also has a has something called a trigger lock, so like you can push down the trigger and it's just well, going to hold it for like when you're playing a driving game or something. According to this, it makes it so you don't pull the trigger all the way back to get the full input. So I'm assuming that like if you pull the trigger back at, at their certain point, it's just excess time. So I'm I'm not exactly sure what it means by that, but I I, I kind of get what it's saying and I'm not sure if I like that or not. Like you pull like halfway back or whatever, you can set it to like halfway back and that's fully pulled. I see. I see. It also has a 3.5 millimeter auto jack audio jack so it should fit more headphones i believe oh that'll be nice instead of like having to buy the ones that you have the you... flimsy microsoft ones yeah although i gotta say the the microsoft headphones for the xbox one were way way better than the ones for mm-hmm. the xbox 360 yeah but i'm looking i'm looking at triggers on the back right now and they don't look too impressive they're not as like, super cool as the fins they yeah. just look like buttons really yeah it's just four extra buttons it looks like mm. and it has it looks like it has like light buttons on the back so you can adjust the lighting oh yeah i see that that looks pretty cool like i guess that's how you change the color yeah but it looks pretty cool and it comes out um let's see i have a, I have a time for it um uh, it comes out i believe in october yeah october 26th cool awesome and speaking of uh controllers um, Xbox One is getting an exclusive uh, white controller only sold by GameStop. Exclusively sold by GameStop. That's it, what I was trying to say. And it looks really cool. Like it, I, I really like it, actually. Yeah, the, it has a it has a gold D pad, which is a nice touch to it. And then the black but black and white buttons, and I I think that gives it like a really like sleek kind of classy look to it. You know? Yeah, it's uh it's priced for sixty. Sixty four and ninety nine. Is that more expensive than usual? Actually, I want to say that's right. At, I mean, that might only be, if anything, it's only like five dollars more. But that seemed like that's right about the same price. Right about. It. I think it comes out. It should be coming. Out, I think at the end of this month. Really? Yeah, I believe so. That'll be nice. I might actually. I need to get a second controller, so I might actually get one. Yeah, it's called. They're calling it Lunar White. So it looks pretty sweet. I like it. It really does. I actually, it's a really nice like design. That. I'm not a huge like controller nut. I really like that. Yeah, I like. I love black and white contrast. Yeah, it it looks really good. It looks great. I've always been like a big like black controller fan or like the black Xboxes and stuff like that. I've always liked those more. Yeah. But this white controller really looks really good. It does. Is that is that all you had? You had something else coming? Uh I got one more thing. All right. Uh everybody knows how much I'm looking forward to Homefront, so I have a little bit of Homefront news. All right. Uh they've released a little bit more of like just like why they're doing it and what's going on with it. Um they, the lead developer says it's basically just a reboot of the entire series. So they're wait wait this this is the uh, home front game where the the Koreans come and they yes this is what we were talking about this in another episode where it has like a skateboard bomb yeah we've talked okay. we talked about this uh, I think it was right after E three so they're just ignoring the story from the first one um okay here's where it gets confusing for me okay I found sources that say that it is um. Four years after the original one takes place. Okay. But then I've heard that they are tossing it out completely. Like, I, I'm hearing conflicting stories, and I can't seem... Like, I'm finding equal numbers, so I can't really find out which one's true and which one's not. So okay. So, I'm confused about it. And then, like, I've had articles that say, it takes place four years after. And then later, it's like, and it's completely new. Like... Yeah. So... Well, what they might be doing is that it takes place four years after the original game, but they might have totally new characters... And they might they have this, a totally different story, but it takes place in the same universe, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it takes place, like, the history of what happened is the same. Yeah. But, like, the events that happened in the first one didn't happen or just don't have any relevance in this game. I see. That that would make sense. Yeah. And then um, they are keeping North Korea as the enemy, of course, because mm. that's what they're... That's, like, the first one would happen. But uh, they were... Uh, some reporters asked, like, why, or journalists, not reporters, asked why they did North Korea again, and instead of like Russia or just another communist place. Yeah. And the uh, response was like, 
that North Korea is just a good enemy. You know, like we see Russia and we see Afghanistan or, or like terrorists. We see all those time and time again. Yeah. As except for like recently, we've never really seen any North Korean fights. You know. That's true. They never they they never been a big uh a big spotlight on them. Like they've never even done like Korean War game as far as I know. Like I've never played one, have you? Um doesn't doesn't uh oh what game am I thinking about? Uh Black Ops? Doesn't that take place during like Vietnam or Korea? It takes place during Vietnam. Oh Vietnam, okay. Vietnam, but it doesn't put, not Korea. Not Korea. I still want my World War One game. I know, right? <laughs> hey, okay, real quick really quick side t- tangent. All right. There's a uh, there's a civil war game that if you can get your hands on it, totally play it. It was made by the History Channel actually. History Channel actually went through a little time where they made video games and they were really? actually pretty decent. And you can shoot a musket and all that stuff. It's a great game. Me and my buddy Alec, we got it. Yeah. And we played it and it was a lot of fun. You can play as one campaign is the north, one campaign is the south. It's really fun. That sounds pretty fun. It really was. The reload, the reload time is realistic and everything. Uh, not quite. It takes you, um, well, yeah, because they do it to where you had the packets of black powder and stuff like that. I see. So it, it cuts it down. It but cuts it, it down significantly. So you only have to do it for like, it, it's like a fifteen second reload or something, which is really quick, but still. Mm. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, is that? Did you have something else? Uh, nothing I'm gonna talk about right now. No. All right. Well, I have some uh, Blizzard news, of course. Shocker. Me being the Blizzard fanboy that I am. Uh, we are finally getting flying in Draenor. Almost like, oh gosh, I think the game's been out for a year now. And we're flying. Tap, you, you play a little bit of WoW, right? Yes, I play a little bit here and there. Well, after level 60, like 60 and up, you can have flying mounts. Yeah. Well, uh, when Draenor launched, you couldn't fly in it. And it's like everyone complained about it. Cause like flying, Blizzard doesn't like flying. Because what what happens is that players, they, rather than exploring the world on the ground, like all the work that goes into creating the terrain and the environment and everything, they fly right over it. They don't, they don't get to see that. They don't get to explore it. It's kind of, it, it almost like wastes the, t- you know, the time they put into developing that, you know, the textures and everything. Wait, I thought Warlords of Draenor was like an expansion for a while. It is. So yes. you're saying like if... Say, like, I had a mount that could fly. If I downloaded that one, I couldn't fly anymore? No. Really? I mean, you can still mount that mount, but you can't fly on it. What? Yeah. So I can, like, walk around on a dragon wings, but if oh. I jump, it just spreads its wings and it can't fly. Oh, I, I would have been so mad about that when that ha- Oh, my gosh. I yeah. probably would have stopped playing because of that. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, so they announced, uh, not this patch, but the last one, they they um they showed off this it's called the Pathfinder achievement and it's this long list of things you have to do to get flying. So people who ha- people who got that achievement as of this patch can now use flying mounts in Draenor. Oh, so they did a thing to where you had to go around and explore. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they did just that. You had to you had to get a certain amount. You had to explore and get a certain amount of treasures. You had to um fill out the entire map for the continent, and you had to get like. Ret- a retribute, um, not retribution. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Your rep- reputation. There okay. we go. Your reputation with uh certain factions. Uh, so they forced you to go around and explore the continent, and then you earned pathfinding. And it does, you know, it doesn't affect your one character. If you get this achievement, all characters can fly, so you don't have to do it over and over again. That's nice. Yeah. Um, Blizzard did say this about flying. The solution was to preserve our original design goal of ensuring players are exploring the world and experiencing it from the ground and getting the uh, appropriate uh, and getting to appreciate its scale and its size and engaging the gameplay aspects of exploration and mystery. Then once they've done that, there is no reason not to allow them to fly and navigate in all dimensions throughout the world and also unlock the ability that for their alts. So yeah, so that's the same thing with that. What I said, they wanted people to fully explore the game, so they would appreciate everything they made. Which is understandable because a lot of people don't realize just how much work goes into like a tree in a video game. Yeah, there's textures and 3D design artists, and there's a, a lot of work that's put in the game. That's why like one of my favorite things to do in video games. That's why I love open world video games so much. 
is because I can just walk around and I can like ap- appreciate like the trees and stuff like that. I can just sit there and walk through the the world that they have. Exactly. And as I'll, I'm killing dragons and stuff, but still. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing nothing more there's nothing more like like uh exciting than exploring this like a large beautiful open world. Yeah, like I, there have been moments in Skyrim where I found areas that I didn't know existed and like my do- my jaw dropped. I was like, "Oh my gosh." Yeah. Like I'd walk into a cave and I'd be like, "Okay, there's going to be like a bear in here or something like that." And I walk in there and there's like a fairy fountain almost, like minus the fairies. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, there's, there's, there was a time where I, I was playing a Skyrim, and I was just walking around. I walk into a, uh, I walk into a, um, a ruin, thinking, "Oh, this is nothing big here," and it ends up like I walk, I walk forward, and like a cage comes up around me, and like this whole thing, this this whole like mini story happens just out the blue. I wasn't expecting it, and those little, those little, those those times make exploring really exciting. Yeah. Because you you never know what you're gonna find. That's why I just love open world games like that. That's why I'm I'm pumped for Fallout Four, and I'm super pumped for the next Elder Scrolls, which they haven't announced yet. But I cannot wait for the announcement for that. Definitely. And would you would you say that open world games are more popular than than like uh, corridor shooters? Unfortunately, no, I wouldn't. I feel like when I feel just because like people can more quickly play. A corridor shooter and stuff like that. I see. And it's more competitive, and I feel like that's why a lot of people play video games nowadays is just for the competition. Mm-hmm. But for people like you and I, who are like we truly love video games, we don't just like play Call of Duty or just Battlefield or whatever. Like not, not, not saying, dissing our yeah, our... not dissing people that just do that. No, like if that's what you're into, that's what you're into. But like, I feel like a lot of people who like truly appreciate video games, not generalizing, but like <laughs> truly appreciate video games and like the worlds and stuff like that are going to want to play an open world game more than they're going to want to play a quarter shooter. Me, I love quarter shooters, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I just prefer an open world. Well, well, if I think if you're going for a, a game that tells a story, I think open world is what you want. Like Fallout, um Metal Gear is n- now open world according to you. Like if you want to tell a it, storytelling games seem to be moving toward open worlds um environments where like I mean, like Call of Duty. I mean, it tells you a story, but I think I think the 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 main part of Call of Duty is the action and the shooting. It's not people don't buy Call of Duty for the story. Yes, yeah, story driven. Yeah, exactly, story driven games are gonna. If you're in the game for the story, that's what I was looking to try. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, it's like if you're in the game for the story, then you're gonna want an open world more than you are a corridor shooter or just a a linear one. Except yeah. unless you're playing like a Telltale, which is literally only story, no gameplay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got another little Blizzard thing here, real quick. Uh, Blizzard announced they have a world premiere live stream announcements. So essentially, this is an announcement for an announcements. Uh, they're announcing the second one we've had this year. <laughs> yeah, th- they're announcing. Um, th- at this announcement, they've announced they're going to announce uh the release date for Legacy of the Void, which is the StarCraft II expansion. Which is oddly enough that it's their this new expansion is gonna finish up the uh story for their current characters. So they're not sure if they're gonna make a StarCraft three. Mike, do you play StarCraft? I do. You do? how is it? I've never I've never like played it. I've never even seen gameplay for it. Um, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Uh I I, I haven't like I, I'm not like super dedicated to it. I kinda hop in and out of it. It's a lot of fun. It's very well made. Uh I think if you I think if I if I ever recommend an RTS to anyone, StarCraft is the first thing I say. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. If you're looking for realism, I wouldn't say it's very real. Like if you want like tanks and soldiers and stuff, I want to go for that. But it's a lot of fun. It's very competitive. Um, pro people get like 300 um, actions per minute. Like they get they get really good. Yeah, but if you're looking, if you're looking for something that you really want to be competitive in, if you're looking for a competitive RTS, I would say StarCraft is is the game you want. Some people say it's a bit too um, hard to get into because of the because because everyone is so competitive that for new players it's hard to get into the. Um, I'm not sure to what I'm looking for. I guess just get into playing the game because it has a very competitive atmosphere. It's hard to learn to play. Uh, I wouldn't say it's hard to learn. Ugh. I wouldn't say it's hard to learn to play, 
because it, I mean, if you play the story, you know how to play. Yeah, no, I meant like it's hard to learn to play against other people, you know, because you're just, it's hard to learn like other people's thing when you're just totally getting destroyed. Exactly, and yes, there is a big difference from playing against an AI to going online. Yeah, there's a there's a huge difference, but at the same time. You can do like a 3v3, which is always nice because you can get like advice from people. Okay. But yeah. It is, is a fun game and I recommend you play it. You know, if, if you're looking for an RTS to play, I might check it out one day. So, and there's, there's all, there's all sorts of fun things. It's, it's a fun game overall. Is that it for news today, Mike, or you got something else? I got one more thing. Jeez Louise, Mike. It's, I was, thought I was one with the news typically. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm on top of it this Stephanie week. Definitely game up, man. Yeah. All right. Well, guess guess what, Taft? For us PC players, <laughs> Batman Arkham Knight finally gets a patch to fix it. Like it, like it's been patched, or is like they are telling the release date for the patch? Um, it looks like the patch came out. Uh, when was this posted? This was posted September fourth, so September third it was patched. No, yeah, September third it was patched. So it was patched yesterday. Not yesterday. No, day two before. days ago. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was patched two days ago. And, um, yeah, this game released June 23rd. That's a long time to be broken. That's two months. That's a long time that to is, be broken. That is just utterly ridiculous. That's, that's bad. I mean, I was thinking the other day, I was like, did they, did they test this at all before they, before they released the PC version of it? I really don't feel like they did because, like, I feel like a lot of games nowadays are uber sensitive about it too. Cause, like, one thing that I haven't brought up yet. I completely forgot to bring up just real quick was how uh, I told you when we were before recording. Yeah. How uh, Rainbow Six Siege got delayed for the uh, to make sure everything's perfect and they're focusing a lot on the PC port too. Well, nobody wants to be the bat, the next Batman. Like, exactly. They, you know, Unity had issues. Uh, we were actually talking about this earlier. How it seems that it's very popular for people to develop their games for a console and then port them to PC. That's because, and my theory behind it is, because I have no, like, actual insight on porting or anything like that, is because since consoles and stuff are so much more specific about what they need. Like, hardware-wise, exactly, software. It's it's easier to port to PC than it is to port to a console. That's true. And they might they might have more tools for console development. Because I, if, I'm sure if you look at the stats, I'm sure more people play on consoles than PC. Yeah, I would imagine. I, I feel like it'd actually be pretty close uh, for like games like Batman stuff like that. I'm sure more people. But if you go to other games or just gaming in general, I feel like it's probably pretty even. Yeah, well, I don't know. We'll, we'll look at the stats one day. We um. Do. Anyway, back to Batman here. Uh, the patch included a reduced frame rate hitches. Um, they improved performance for all GPUs as long as you have the latest drivers. Um. Yeah, but the game, even though they patched it and apparently it's it seems to be mostly fixed according to this um it's you still can't buy it on steam it's still temporarily suspended so i don't know if they just forgot to unsuspend it or they're not they're not confident in what they're doing yet but yeah so i'm hoping this works but uh i I don't know i'm probably not going to end up getting it other things have already come out like i like if i'm gonna get a game right now i'm probably gonna get metal gear yeah because, like, the hype for this game is already gone. I mean, two months, that's a long time for the game cycle. Like, yeah, other games have come out. That's past, like, sp- like spoiler, like, like the spoiler deadline, you know? Or, like, people are like, okay, not going to say anything about yeah. spoiling it. I'm just going to go ahead and wait. And... Yeah, it's still that's still a really long time for a game to be... Uh, um, that's ridiculous. Yeah, because they just lost all the hype. That, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's like a mood killer, essentially. And like they they didn't even do anything to like hype it back up. Yeah, they should have released maybe a DLC for it. Yeah, like do something time. that would be like, oh, it's finally fixed PC. Now I'm gonna get it and get this with it or something like that. You know? Yeah. Well, it would really stink if they were like, hey guys, we fixed it. Here's a new patch and a DLC, <laughs> and then the patch doesn't work. Oh my god. That would that would be bad. I, honestly, at that point, I'd just have to laugh. Yeah, that'd be bad. But they 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 need to do something to get the game. Get that steam rolling again, you know? Yeah. Because, like, like I said, other games have come out. That ship's uh, sailed on, I guess the phrase is. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, you want to move on to what we'll be playing? Yeah, I feel like we need to, considering our time's getting pretty long this episode. Let's do this. 
What you playing? Taff, did your phone just go off? My phone did just go off. I'm sorry. We're recording here, darn it. I know. I'm sorry. All right. All right. So, um, Taff, I've been playing a buttload of Heroes of the Storm. How is it? It's fantastic. I love it. Um, Isn't that like a Blizzard League of Legends type thing? Yes, it okay. is. It's some people, people call it a MOBA. Blizzard themselves say this isn't a MOBA. What do um, they call it? I'm, I forget. I think they call it like some like a team team action game. I, I'm not sure what they call it, but um, a major difference between Heroes of the Storm and League of Legends. I um, I haven't played too much League of Legends, so I'm not 100 percent sure about this. But League the, the leveling system in League of Legends is very player um, oriented, where each player has their own uh, like leveling. Have, e- each player gets their own experience. Where in Heroes of the Storm your team levels as a team. Like you there's like a universal experience for all your team. Really? So like if I'm level one, everybody else on my team is level one? Yes. And if you were to level up, everyone's level two. So awesome. all, so everyone who's killing things, all the XP goes to the team. That's really nice. Yeah, it makes it it's it's much more team focused, which is which is fun because if you're your friends, you know exactly, and it means that you're not going to be so focused on just trying to level yourself up. You're going to be focused on trying to get you get your team to win and get your team's objectives done. Exactly, and there's a lot of communication going on. And I've been playing a lot of Murden. He's like a dwarf warrior. He's a tank essentially. He's called a he's called a warrior, which is a, which is a class that you have high health. You're hit. You know you don't hit as hard. But you have a lot of health, so you can kind of dive in there and, t- and soak up the damage, so that the um the assassins, which focus on damage, can then move in and take out characters. Okay, sounds just like a raid party or whatever. Yeah, and recently I've gotten to Illidan. He's an assassin character. He's super cool. He has like two like blades of I forget what they're called, glaives. Actually, they're called glaives. That's that's the word. And he's a lot of fun, but he has some issues. So usually assassin characters they they have burst damage so they can do a bunch of damage really quickly pause and do a bunch of damage really quickly right yeah well the issue with Illidan is that a lot of people complain that he has low burst damage and he has higher sustained damage so he'll do he'll do a lot he'll do like low damage but he does a lot over time so like a lot of bleeding damage or like he just doesn't have a cooldown period as long um, well, not exactly that. It's just that, like, so let's take, um, a hunter. I play a hunter in World of Warcraft. Yeah. Right? I can do, I can do a bunch of damage. Oh, I snapped. That's bad. <laughs> I can do a bunch of damage really quickly and then I have to regain my, my focus so I can do a bunch of damage really quickly again. So, so if you kind of look at a graph, there's like a big spike. It goes down. There's a pause, big spike again of damage. Right? Yeah. Well, Illidan, he kind of has like a medium damage, but it's pretty constant. Okay? Okay, yeah. I got you, Sam. But what what I like about him is that he's the most mobile um, character in the game. He's like really quick? He he moves a lot and he can move he can move really quickly, which is a lot of fun for me because I don't like standing still in games. But the thing is, I was thinking, if they gave the most mobile class in the game, like burst damage, that'd be a little overpowered. Because that that means you can move into combat, do a bunch of damage, and move out of combat really quickly, you know? Yeah. So a real quick question about the game. Uh is it like overhead like League of Legends is, or is it like you play as like it looks like World of Warcraft but you're in like a MOBA setting? Uh no, it's like it's like League of Legends where you click to move and okay, I was just making sure because the way you were kind of describing it kind of made made it sound like you were like doing like World of Warcraft, like it looked like you were playing World of Warcraft but in like an arena. No, it's not quite that. Um, the thing is about the thing is about this game is that you you don't have a lot of spells. You have like maybe five maximum. Okay, which is pretty cool. And the thing about what I like about this game compared to like Call of Duty or something, I know they're two different genres completely, but what I like about this is that it's more important for you as a player to stay alive than to kill, than to get that that final kill on that guy who's running away. Because the amount of experience you give to the other team from dying is it outbalances that kill, you know? Yeah. 
So it makes survivability really important. And I kind of like that, you know? Yeah, which is, that's really nice. Like, you're not, like, it's more strategic and not having to so much, like, focus on, like, getting kills, 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 kills. It's more not die, not die, get a kill, not die, not die, get a kill. Exactly. And, like, you, you don't rush in blindly the combat. Yeah, which is really cool. Yeah, but, like, Illidan has really low hit points, so I've been dying a lot lately, which is bad. Come on, Mike. Yeah. What have you been playing, Taff? Uh, I just recently bought Mad Max. How is it? It's pretty decent. Um, I'm not, I, I gotta say, though, I wasn't disappointed by it. Like, it wasn't super great, but I wasn't disappointed, you know? I gotcha. It's not, it's not like a game of the year. Exactly, but it's a good game. Like, I, it's decent. I probably wouldn't pay $60 for it again. Like, I might return it and just wait till it gets back down. Yeah. And get, like, Phantom Pain right now or something like that. I've but, heard uh, good things from that game. I've heard great things about Phantom Pain. But, um, it's, it's a good game. Like, I would, I would probably spend a good, like, $30, $40 on it. It's, it's fun. The car combat's really good. Uh, they changed it up back from when we talked about it last. I think that was the E3 show, or maybe right after the E3 show. Yeah. And, um, so we talked about it back then, and they changed it up a little bit. Like, it's not quite as customizable. Mm hmm. Um, still very customizable. Don't get me wrong. Just instead of having, like, the tires being, like, more focused on speed. This one's more focused on speed. This one's more focused on handling and stuff yeah. like that. It's still like that. It's just like this tire is an upgraded one of the one that you have. I see. This one's an upgraded one. This one's handling. Like it's, it's just not quite the same as it was. You know. Yeah. Well, we were talking about on a on a later episode that, um, like you would you would like have specific tires. Like if you wanted to be off road a lot, you would go with the off road tires. Exactly. And if you want to drive on the road, you go with the road tires. Yes. Yeah, back when I did that, when I was watching somebody play it, and that's what they were talking about, and then now that I'm playing it myself, that does not seem to be the case. I they, I haven't unlocked everything yet. I see. But as far as I can tell, like I can kind of see if the stats and stuff like that, nothing gives you, there's not an off-road stat or anything like that. I don't see anything different about it, you know? That stinks. Yeah. Well, they need, to make, they need to make another game where you have like that much control. Like, if I could have a game... Where they gave me like a base model for a car, and I could decide like to put like plates of armor on it, or choose like lighter tires or something. I feel like that's what it was originally. Like that's what I, everything I'd heard about it. That's what it was. But then they changed it, you know, to where it was more of like, this is the car. Here's what you can do to it. You can upgrade it in this way, or you can upgrade it in that way. Yeah. Well, that that's my that might be what everyone wanted. Yeah. See, they have these things in the game called archangels. Yeah. Um. You have a guy, you, the reason that they're called Archangels is because at the beginning of the game, you meet a mechanic called Chum Bucket. That's an awesome name for Dude, a mechanic. No, there are so many better names. Oh, are, is there? Hold, I'm going to get into that. It's the best part. It's honestly the best part of the game. All right. Um, but you meet him and he is like, you know how in Mad Max, like cars are their religion. Yeah. And they spray themselves in the mouth of chrome and stuff. Exactly. This dude takes that to another level does he yeah he's he's like that crazy like preacher man like that one like just super religious person that you know creature man like just like everything he says is somehow tied into religion <laughs> that's okay. this guy but with like cars that's, that's everything ev it's it's alec basically that's funny yeah but uh so he uh he calls his garage his tabernacle his ta wait wait his tavern apple his tabernacle. What's a tabernacle? It's a temple. Oh, okay. It's a fancy word for temple that's used in the Bible. I see. And um, so and he calls the uh magnum opus your car. He calls it his angel. He calls all he cars are angels to him. <laughs> that's really weird. Yeah, and uh, he call uh I think they're I think the gods like carburetor or something like that. It's wonderful. Wait, and, they named the gods after car parts? No, I think the god like god. Oh, like the one guy. It's a, I'm pretty sure it's monotheistic. Um, <laughs> is like I, th it's carburetor or he calls the magnum opus his angel carbur a uh, combustion. That's it. He calls the god combustion, not carburetor combustion. I think they talk about in the mo in the movie, the Mad Max movie. Maybe I was too focused on all the things blowing up. I think there's a reference to combustion or something. Maybe I could I would imagine. Uh, yeah. but yeah, so he's super. He's super religious about that and he calls like specific cars yeah that like he has plans for like the ones that like the speed demon it's solely focused on speed 
and so it has no defense to it. It's just super, super fast. So do you have like a garage where you store all your cars? Do you, you have, have more than one car? You have bases, yes. You can have more than one car. I see. But your magnum opus can be changed on the spot at any, any point in time. So like I could pause the game and change my car right there. And how I do, could change wait. it into an archangel. How does how does that work in game? Does your car just transform right then and there? Yeah, you unpause the game. Uh but I like to think that uh Chum Bucket considering he's the best like he's a super awesome mechanic, just amazing. Yeah. Um I like to think that while I'm still paused, he changes it for me. So 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 can you do that in combat? Yep. That's really overpowered. Oh, it's completely overpowered, but it's nice. That's that's completely. I feel like you should be. You should have to go to a base to do that. You can it, it. You you can still get like hurt badly and stuff like that. Like it doesn't bring back health if you do like your defenses up or something like that. I you see. Know? But like I feel like I feel like my choice of car when I leave my base, that choice is now like weighs less because I can just change it on the fly. It does. Yeah, and I agree with that. But still, I mean, I'm not complaining. I see. Okay, but if you had to rate the game, what would you give it? Uh. If five is dead average, yeah, five dead average, I'd give it like a six point five. Six point five. Okay, so six point five seven. Okay, now if you had to rate it compared to other video, other movie video games, what would you give it? Uh, probably like a straight up ten, just because <laughs> video game movies, I mean, movie video games suck. Yeah, except for Batman, which I'm not. Those aren't based off the movies or anything like that. So, and you know. Uh, on my GameCube, um, SpongeBob had some pretty fun, fun games. On a scale of one to ten, those SpongeBob games are twelves. <laughs> those games were amazing. They get plus two for nostalgia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, I want to talk real quick about the games and the games' names. The main character, like the main character you play as, is Max. But the main boss, his name is Scabarus. Scabarus. Scrotus. Oh my gosh! What? Yep, I'll I'm, let I'm, I'll let your imagination run with that one. I'm face palming right now, just so you know that. Yep, nope, but that's not even the worst one. My favorite name I've come across in this is they have these things called top dogs at bases, like they're top dog bases. That's where you go and you fight these guys to get the paint for your car. Oh, you do you fight for paint? Yeah, they like they they control the paint. They're like Scrotus's like top dogs or whatever. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, we got we got <laughs> oh my gosh! Yep, and uh, all right. So, uh, if you can refer to him as little as possible, that'd be great. Come on. <laughs> um, I mean, they, that's what they call him. That they, that's the constant name. They don't call, call him Scabarus. They call him Scrotus. That's weird. In the game, that sounds like a Latin word for something bad. Yep, but nope. You're gonna, you're gonna probably want to edit this part out, but you can't because I'm. They're gonna want to know the name. All right. Uh, this dude's name. He's the top dog. He carries the chrome paint called raw steel. His name is Rim Jobby. Okay. Yep, Rim, jo- Rim Jobby. That's bad. Yep. That's bad. Wait, yep. w- liquid steel? Is that chrome? Uh, it's, yeah. Did I say liquid steel? I don't know. What'd you say? I think I, I think it's like cold steel or something like that. Cold steel? Something like, it's something steel. It's, it's okay, all right. That's and it, it's this the chrome paint job. It looks really cool. Nice. You have to have it to get to build the, st- the Speed Demon car. I see. So you had to un- so you had to fight for those paint jobs. Yeah, you have to fight your way up to the base, like through the base. Yeah. And then uh you get there and you fight the guy and it's hand to hand. Like you get you get out of the car quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like it's probably about 50-50 that you are in the car versus not in the car. Okay. And how's the exploration? Do you do, is it fun driving around exploring things? Oh, uh, it is. Sometimes I get aggravated when I'm driving past a raider or whatever and they attack me, but I see. Every once in a while it's they just like kill me and I'm like god dang it like it's just aggravating but how they, long does how long does gas last you I've yet to run out of gas but I've come close a couple times um it can I feel like it can last you like a good like two hours that's not bad no that's um, that's that's more than like you would sit down and play yeah usually. But, but for me anytime I haven't run out a big reason why I haven't run out is because anytime I see a gas can I pick it up and I fill up my car I see good idea Taft yeah uh but yeah, um, since we're talking about this, since we were talking, this seems to be a big topic on our podcast today. All right, it runs great on PC. Does it? According to everybody, it runs amazing on PC. The port was good. Yeah, the port was done very That's well. That's good to hear. Yeah. How much is it? Um, right now I paid just below seventy. 
Oh, I mean, it's, it's the same price as a brand new game, you know. Yeah, why do why do why is that so expensive? I don't know. I don't know. Steam, uh, tell me. Yeah, but just so you know, uh, I've heard two stories of what the where, when the to- like game timeline is. You know. Yeah. Uh, um, I've heard one that says that you are like right before the first movie, and I've seen a lot of things that could point to it. Like, there's a dog and. Yeah, just a lot of things I could point towards that, you know. Yeah, but then I've also seen ones where, uh, st- like theories or not necessarily theories or, but people saying like this is all from right before the game came out. So, mm. um, saying that you that Scabarus is actually a Morden a Morden Joe's um son. You know, Immortal Joe from the uh, movie, the new movie. Yeah. I've heard theories that say he's the son, and I could kind of see it. They kind of look similar. Uh, remember the really buff dude in the movie, like the buff son? Yeah, I remember him. It, it looks a lot like him. I see. Like, he even has, like, the nasal, like, the air oxygen into his uh, nose and stuff like that. Yeah. I could see it being that, but I'm not positive. And I, I, I think it's, I think my theory along is that it's, I haven't found out yet in the story, hmm. is that it's right before... Uh, the first movie, because the main objective is to get to Gas Town, and from what I remember of the first one, that's where what uh, Max is going. Gotcha. Gas Town. Well, according to Steam, it's fifty nine ninety nine, but if I want to get the game and all the movies, it's a hundred and six. That's honestly not that bad. No, because that's like that's like what uh four. 40, it's like four movies. Forty five dollars for four movies. It's not bad. That's not a bad deal. And one of those is brand new. It That's comes true. with it comes with the brand new Fury Road. That's nice. All right. Okay. Well, is that, is that all you got, Taft? That's all I've been playing this week. Cause all I'm right. To beat that game as quick as possible. That way, I can go get Metal Gear. Wow. And it has an o- overwhelmingly positive on uh, Steam. Really? That's pretty good. That's good to hear. I mean, it, they did do a lot of like the atmosphere is very well done, like the footprints and the sand and stuff. Yeah. They did put a lot of work in this game, and I can really respect it. And so I'm glad to hear that people are liking it. That's good. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, that's all That's all I have today. That's it. All right. See you guys next time. See y'all. Thank you for listening. Uh, again, you can contact the show at our new email. It's always exciting to say. At um, collegegamersshow at gmail.com. It's all lowercase. Um, I couldn't get the college gamers, so don't email them. Or you know what? Email them hate mail. It's up to you. Yeah, go ahead. Whatever. <laughs> All right, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Blue Cows with a Z. Um, Taft still doesn't do anything unless we get likes. Come on, guys. So if it, maybe, you know, if it comes down to it, Taft, we might have to make a Patreon level where you get a Twitter account. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> we could totally do that. I'm down for that because I hate social media, but I will do all it right. for you guys because I care for you all that much. We just we love y'all. We love y'all. There we go. Okay, I hope everyone has a good week, and uh, we'll catch y'all next time. Blue Cow Radio.